Right, let's bring it back home. A three o'clock kickoff, interestingly, at Newlands. Stormers versus the Chiefs. I mean, that is a massive clash. Stormers are on a roll of note. Uh, do you think that they'll be able to sort of make it fire from fire before they, <laughs> before they jet off? Yeah, that's another another desperately tight sort of seesaw mm. sort of call. Um, I've gone with the Stormers just on the grounds of the Chiefs having had to make the long haul, mm. uh, their first sort of uh, uh, overseas game. So you sort of hope that the, uh, the Stormers, uh, who are in a nice groove at the moment, can sort of catch them a bit cold. Um, you would hope that the, the Stormers mm. will, will get, a, get a good sort of head of steam uh, early on um, and then sort of be, a, be able to keep their noses in front because we know that the Chiefs can be a very dangerous side. The mm. sort of New Zealand team who are capable of scoring sort of, you know, three tries in 15 minutes type yeah. of thing. So um, uh, the, 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 there can be no You've resting two, on the laurels. Like, very sort of conflicting, well, yeah, opposing styles of rugby there, I guess, as well. I mean, the Stormers, I mean, will definitely need to sort of play to that strength of defence, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I mean, last week, we're, you know, they were definitely worked on, the, on their breakdown as well. Yeah, look, I mean, if, if they get their set piece working, I mean, we know that the Stormer Scrum is actually a, a, a sort of a device of, of, never mind just sort of reasonable security, it's actually, a, it's become something of, of strength for them. Mm. Um, so they'll try to, uh, to to put the shunt on the Chiefs. No, not the easiest of tasks against, uh, mm. so there's some pretty big individuals in that, uh, in that Chiefs pack, um, but uh, uh, if they can match um, the, the good scrummaging with, with an improved line-out, then I think uh, sort of good first phase ball should keep the Stormers on the front foot. And then I think Mr. Catrakilis will be sort of preying on, on sort of errors mm. and, and, and winning some penalties uh, to, to keep the Stormers' nose in front that way. Because we know that they're, they're not sort of um, scoring tries too prolifically, but I, they're playing smart rugby, the Stormers. Um, yeah. And, um, and I, I think that they can actually winkle this one out. They did the last time they played the Chiefs at Newlands, two seasons ago, I think it was 36-34 um, at Newlands. And it could be v desperately close again. Um, that said, last season, um, when the Stormers were on tour, they got... I wouldn't say blown apart, but they lost 36-20, so a 16-point gap when they, when they played mm. uh, the, uh, the Chiefs away. Um, but the Stormers, of course, uh, believe that they're made of sterner stuff this season. Um, so with, a, with a, you know, what you think will be a pretty good crowd at Newlands, uh, maybe and that's probably sort of quite a few uh, sort of homegrown chief supporters. Yes, there will be. Well. Uh, there'll be. A, there might be a bit of swapping of sort of uh, some Crusaders jerseys will have had to have been swapped for number twelve <laughs> uh, Chiefs jerseys. Now that Sonny yeah. Bill is sort of uh, you know yeah. uh, he's doing his sort of rugby union yo-yo a bit. Um, so yeah, there will be a little bit of support for the for the away side. But um, I, I think we should sort of maybe take the patriotic uh, stance here and, and just have the Stormers nicking it. Okay. And finally, the return clash between the Cheetahs and the Sharks. The Sharks also another embattled side. Um, how do you see that one going? Obviously, the, uh, this is being played in Bloemfontein. So, I mean, the Sharks, it, it doesn't get any easier. Yeah. Um, it, it's, 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 I wrote a piece this week. I think it's, it, it really is do or die for them. I think you can perhaps afford to go one from four and, and get your way back into the competition. If you go one from five, you've got a lot of uh, leeway to make up. Uh, for one thing, you, you're, no longer, you're probably no longer playing for one of those coveted top two positions uh, at the end of the season. All you're doing from then on is scrambling to just get into the playoffs in, say, position five or six, which means you're going to have to do some traveling, you're going to have to play an extra game in the, in the playoffs phase. Um, so the Sharks are really going to be up against it if they lose this one. Bear in mind that on the opening day of, of their season, they lost the home game. Uh, this is a return match um, pretty quickly against the Cheetahs after that really shock sort of, what was it, 35-29 yeah. in, um, in, in Durban. In Durban. Um, so the Cheetahs uh, will be thinking, well, we, you know, we might be up for a little double here. However, I, I actually think that um, there's going to be enough desperation from the Sharks, especially as they've been reinforced by, by people like Tendai and Tawarira, Yanni Duplessis back in the front row. So that mm. should ease a little bit of their scrum woes. I think they should stabilize in that department. And we'll, we should get a, a nice battle royale, by the way, between Kuni Ostezen on the Cheetah's tight head side and, uh, and the Beast on the loose head, um, even though he's going to be a little bit ring rusty uh, for the Sharks. Um, so some good battles there. Could be a um, Perhaps even a reasonably high scoring game if the pitch is sort of hard and firm as we know a lot of those uh, the sort of uh, platelant and, and high felt pitches to be. Um, so uh, the Cheetahs have certainly got a puncher's chance but uh, I actually am going to go fairly confidently for a, for a Sharks win. Okay.